Good evening, savages. Uh, we are doing the Sensaba Tunnel in Kingsport, Tennessee. My whole brain just went <laughs> gone there for a second. Um, so tonight we're doing uh, some more of our haunted escapades that we started last weekend. Um, so this one just kind of came out of like nowhere. We were just kind of thinking about different things, and all of a sudden it popped up, and I was like, let's do this. Yeah, this one sounds kind of neat. Because it's creepy. Yeah. Did you see the pictures, though? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It looks like something that they probably used in movies, but I don't think they did, but it's very creepy. It really looks like it could be in a movie. It does. Um, I was trying to think of what movie, but there were so many that have tunnels in them. Yeah. But the history on this one, it's controversial. It is. There's three different stories. Yes. Four different stories. But... Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, it trickles down from like what actually happened in the beginning to like what people are saying now because, you know, they want to scare well, people yeah. throughout the community. Of course. Why not? Well, I mean, that's what you do in small towns. It gets more people there, but then... When nothing happens, it's like, okay, why are we here now? Yeah, and I guess there's two tunnels that are part of this, and one of them is not really, you can't use it anymore. And there's a house by that one, and the people in the house get mad if people go to check out the tunnel and park anywhere near their house. Well, why would you buy a house next to a tunnel? That's just asking for things to happen to you. Right, because you can't tell me you didn't know the history when you bought the house. Well, that's like people that buy houses next to cemeteries, and they're like, oh, it's always so loud, and there's people there all the time. Well, it's a cemetery. <laughs> people go to visit their loved ones. And they bury people when it's time. What did you expect? Right. That just doesn't make any sense Not to, to me. mention the fact that you're going to have a whole lot of house guests. Yes. I want a house next to the cemetery so bad, <laughs> but I've been told no. I grew Stupid up. Stupid reasons. Behind the cemetery. I would love that. I would. It's probably not a good idea. Not for you, no. no. <laughs> no, then I'd have my doors and my windows, like people just nonchalantly like walking in and be like, oh, hey, Frank, or hi, Ted. Nice to see you again today. <laughs> Bathroom's off limits. You know the rules. If you're going to knock stuff over, do it non-perishable items. Yes. Please don't break the dishes. I would be so mad if a ghost did that in my house. Yeah. I mean, we already have rules set in my house for that. Because, yeah. you know, John likes to knock things off. You want to start on the history of the tunnel? Cause... So the tunnel was built back in 1826. The man, so the stories, there's a few different things that are happening. When the tunnel was built, it was basically, you know, you can go from one section to another. Everybody knows how a tunnel works. So you skip some steps. <laughs> well, I mean, if I have to explain what a tunnel is for, then you probably should go back to school. <laughs> anyway, so they built this tunnel. Well, the guy that lived next to the tunnel, he did not like that there were a lot more people than he anticipated mm -hmm. using the tunnel. Well, I think it was what they were using it for that right. he got a little aggravated yes. over. So one of the stories is that he murdered people and stashed them down in the tunnel. And then the other story is that none of that actually happened. It was just made up so people would get more, I don't know. Scare factor. Yeah. Then there was another story that somebody, a homeless guy, had tried to rob his house. Yes. And use the baby as a shield. And then one of the tunnels was known for flooding, so he threw her in the water. Yes. So, according to what the townspeople who were around for that time period, who were able to give some backstory, was that none of that actually happened. Yes, he was upset about the tunnel because it was so close to his house. There was a lot of teenagers. There was a lot of vandalism, but he lived out his time. He did, however, though, I laughed when I read it. He did, however, though, from what people said, would stand down at one end of the tunnel 
and make scary noises as people would go through the tunnel. He would like make scream. Yeah, and... he, he would scream scary noises, um, odd sounds, and it would deter people from mm -hmm. going through it. And I laughed at that because I would love to be that crotchety old person <laughs> who's just like, no, get out of my tunnel and make sounds like the whole time. Yeah. Because it did. I mean, it worked for a little while for the people who did get scared, but for other people who thought it was funny, yeah. they just continued on right. through the tunnel. And he owned all of the land, and I think yep. the tunnel was named after him. It was, yeah. yes. Yeah, he owned the house, the property, the road, I, which I don't know how you would have back then, but I guess that's the thing. Um, no, but no. yeah, he owned that whole major thing, which they had to get permission from him to build the tunnel in the first place. Which, granted, you know, skips a few steps and you don't have to go all the way right. around everything. But and there was a railway that ran at the top of the tunnel. Yeah. So I'm sure he made some decent money off of that. If he didn't get paid for that, I I would sue somebody at this right. point because that's a lot of money. Right. <clears throat> so there's a little twist to the story. Back in the early, mid-1900s, there was a guy from Sicily who had come over here because mm -hmm. he was running from the Italian authorities. Come to the United States. We'll yeah. take anybody. Right. Because they said he killed somebody. I'm not surprised. It's Italy. He's his probably part of the mob. Was having, well, his wife was supposedly having an affair, and he killed the guy. Hmm. Then he ran here. He got to New York in, like, 1905. He eventually settled in uh, Virginia. Then, supposedly, somehow, he ended up down there and did some work on the tunnels. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's what a lot of migrant workers yeah. did. They did tunnels. They did roads. So, while they were building and fixing up the tunnel... There was a big explosion that killed seven of his best friends. Oh. Yeah, and it was just a big me bloody mess of twisted bodies and wreckage and whatnot. What they normally would do is they would take them and they would bury them in the pauper graves in, it's called Ross Campground Methodist Church Cemetery. I can see where this is going. Right, which was mm -hmm. near the tunnel. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is people have tried to track back and you cannot verify if they were actually buried there. So the other thing they would do to save some money is uh -huh. just bury them in the construction site. Some of the hauntings could potentially be those seven guys that... Right. Well, I mean, all the construction places from anywhere from the 1800s to, I mean, even early 2000s, if they were not able to get to people, they did. They just threw yeah. some concrete on them and like, all right, this is where you're gonna, this is where you're gonna be now, which I don't like because their families didn't get to say goodbye. Right. If they had family, they don't have a grave to visit. I mean, they probably do, but it's empty and they know it's empty. The fact that construction sites. I mean, even today are just, you know, how many times do you see something pop up on TV of, oh, they found a body in such and such park or such and such place because they were putting in a new road. Why? Yeah. Well, look at how many houses end up having bodies buried under the foundation. I Why? worry about that. Yeah. We're talking about remodeling our house, and I'm like, we're going to dig up the basement, and there's going to be, like, bodies. And I'm going to be like, oh, look, there's Sean. <laughs> right. We knew John existed somewhere. I really need to find out what his real name is. <laughs> but I, my whole problem with that is the whole haunting a area of places. Roads, yeah. tunnels, you get, like, waterways. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you find a body because of that? Right. Because the people in 1800s didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, people supposedly have heard screaming. They've heard babies crying. They've seen shadow. I don't like I don't want to say crying. shadow figures, but they've seen shadowy things. Which, anything can be debunked. It's right. It's a tunnel. And if, you, and if you have those groups like us, we do all the research first. We play with lights, we play sounds, we try to see, can you hear things echoing from the front? Which, I mean, if people have never been through a tunnel, which I don't know how you would at this point, they do echo. 
Yeah. And they echo for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So you can have somebody stand at one side and scream and you'll hear it at least halfway through if you're not drowned out oh, by, yeah. the, by the end. So I'm not saying it's not haunted. No. But... You would have to do like further research. Yeah. And there's, test things. There's not a whole lot where people have shared evidence they've gotten from there. No. It's mostly just so-and-so says they heard a baby cry or so-and-so right. says... And a lot of animals m mimic sounds of mm -hmm. children and babies. Mm -hmm. That's been proven. I mean, I know there were issues with this place because, you know, people have graffitied everything, huh. all the vandalism that has occurred through this tunnel, which is why nobody really wants to go down there anyway. And the fact that you have this family who I'm sure to this day still has their name that's been drug through the mud because somebody made up a story one day right because we don't know if it's true or not right and there are there are stories that say that murderers have used this tunnel to dump bodies right so most likely it's probably haunted in some way shape or form especially if the guys are buried there right and then any of the dead bodies that have been dumped then you add on the graffiti, which is disrespectful if the guys are buried in there. And depending on what kind of graffiti, because we all know hoodlums <laughs> like right. to paint symbols that they don't know what they're actually meant for. Yeah. And you get the demonic symbols or you get the symbols that trap things or open things. And mm -hmm. instead of people actually doing the research, they're just like, oh, this looks cool. So we're going to do it today. I saw this on TV. Right. And then you get the whole demons are trapped. <laughs> Demonday.com. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> um, but you get that whole and then, then it becomes the, well, this is haunted because of this reason or this is haunted because of this reason. But you don't actually know the reason. No. Because more and more people are, who are becoming paranormal investigators, they see a speck and they're like, oh, it's an orb. No, right. it's a chunk of dust. Right. You're in a dusty old house. It's or outside. There are bugs. I get that whole point. But we don't know about any of this place no. other than what we've done research on yeah and i mean this is another one of those places where you go out into the middle of the tunnel and you shut your car off your car doesn't turn back on yeah i forgot that one yeah that <sighs> there is a story that there i don't was a lady that was driving like, through there and she got halfway through and her car right and she vanished okay so she ran away right right the whole car engine thing i know I know what happens. I know a lot of like the UFO pages and whatnot. It's also been proven on a few shows, but a lot of that reason was because of the electromagnetic fields mm -hmm. that they were driving through that depending on how old your car is, it will shut it down. It's been proven. Right. But just because you go out into the middle of nowhere, which again, you shouldn't do, but people are stupid. You go out into the middle of nowhere, and you're like, oh, we're going to shut the car off to see if it turns back on. Well, okay, that's fine. But if your car doesn't come back on, you don't automatically think, oh, my God, it's haunted. <laughs> the ghost killed my car. Like, no. <laughs> if it's cold outside, there's a reason. If it's too hot outside, there's another reason. If your car is old, like, you know, a 1970-something Honda, I'm sure it's got problems because Hondas have those. <laughs> your car is going to have issues. Right. Every car has issues. Don't chalk it up to a ghost. <laughs> now, if you turn around and you see somebody sitting in your back seat that should not have been there or was not there when you got into the car, that's a problem. That's when you just abandon all hope. Yeah, just leave Get out of the car. car. Take off running towards the lights people <laughs> don't go further into the do tunnel. not go, go into out. the woods or through <laughs> the tunnel you go back towards civilization this is what movies have taught us pay attention oh, that's hilarious. this is just going to become a channel of what not to do right. in pay the attention. middle of nowhere as far as from what i found there isn't a whole lot of more history about the house no or its property not. it's just like it got to a certain point and then it was just done yeah like, nobody talks about it anymore. Mm -mm. Now, that could be because the family doesn't want people to talk about it anymore. If there is even a family. 
Yeah, I don't know. He I mean, he died, I think they said, at he was like 61. 61. Yeah. Um, and he did have children, so... And that's one of the stories was that his children did not die. He did not kill yeah. them. Yeah, that because that, they all lived the other normal story lives. Said he killed all of his children, and yeah, yeah, no. but he just went nuts. Which again, everybody goes nuts. Doesn't right? mean you kill your family. No, unless your name's Lizzie Borden. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's a whole nother <laughs> episode. Yes, <laughs> but I just don't see. I get it's a tunnel. I get that. Yes, it could be haunted. Right. But there's got to be more to it than just what is in the news articles. Yeah. Just because you have people that are dumping bodies, which again, don't do that. No. But just because you're you're getting the stories of people dumping bodies or that he murdered his family and all the graffiti, that doesn't make it haunted. No. And another thing too is once these stories get out there, people pick up on them and then they just run with them. Yeah. So it becomes this big, huge thing. He was this guy who lived to 71, built a tunnel, got mad because kids were doing things they shouldn't be doing there. Right. And now it's turned into, well, not so much anymore. It's quieted down. But for a while, it had turned into this big thing. Right. Well, now you have all the highways and stuff, so you don't have to go through all the back roads. I mean, yeah. that's essentially what it is, is a back road. But, I mean, that's just like when they tell you don't put things out on the internet because they'll stay forever. Even if you delete them, <laughs> things stay on the internet forever. So, I mean, it's just like before there there was internet, you have those people that starts with a story and then it runs rampant. And then by the time it gets to you, you're like, oh, so-and-so, this is what happened. But we don't know that's what happened. Right. I mean, it's just like the whole, the Blair Witch project where they're oh, like oh Lord. yeah this is what happened we don't know that's what happened yeah all we got was a movie that was kind of cheesy based on what might have happened yeah and the whole the other paranormal activity i don't like that movie we all know how <laughs> i feel about that movie it's <laughs> stupidest movie ever made because this one it's called celia rose house and it's right here in ohio um, so in 1896, there was a girl named Seely who poisoned her family with arsenic. If you want your parents to go away, murdering is not the op <laughs> It's not the way to go. It's really not. Um, how did she get a hold of arsenic? That's what I want to know. Rat poison back oh. in the day. Oh, yeah, I forgot. So apparently the story says because they, they didn't like her infatuation with the neighbor. I'm, how old was she? She was 23 years old. Oh, so she wasn't a child. Okay. Well, yes and no. She was 23 years old, but she was described as having a childlike mind. Okay. So. Well, the way that I read this story was there was a child infatuated with an adult and he was not reciprocative and she i was like yeah. okay well and that's... he he was not no interested in her in any way shape or form he lived at home he was telling his dad this girl is nuts i want nothing to do with her the heart wants what the heart wants <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and that's how you get on law and order <laughs> <laughs> yes yes it is um so her family had basically put the squash on it and she was not having that so she decided she was going to poison them uh her father whose name was david he died within a few days i read that part and then the rest was just gross yeah there's a couple different variations of the story mm -hmm. the brother died a little later he ling lingered for a few days. Mm. Um, the mom, one article says she lingered for a few days. The other article says that Seely gave her a second dose of the arsenic in order well, to get her to go. Yeah, I mean, because not that I've ever used it, but I've done plenty of research. Just um, in case. Just, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we can't talk about that on the internet. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm kidding. It's a joke. For legal purposes, it is a joke. <laughs> um, but no, with arsenic, you either have to give, like, you have to give the right amount. Yeah. Or you get the people that can live as long as they're caught in time. They usually just have, like, a lot of kidney issues and things like that. Or you have the people who do linger, which pretty much just means their body doesn't know what to do, whether it should live or shut down. So you're in, like, a vegetative state. You're suffocating. Your body's shutting down. Yeah. So, and then if you give too much, obviously you die, which would honestly be better than sitting there suffocating to death for God knows how long. Well, apparently she took it and put it in cottage cheese. (laughs) (laughs) And then fed it to the family. So... If you think about it, dad may have died first because she may not have mixed it well enough. And right. He may have gotten the majority of it. Ew. Plus, dairy product coats the stomach. So, in my mind... Unless you're lactose intolerant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, he may have gotten more. Right. And then... Yeah, again, because if you mix it in one dish and then separate it between yeah. the three... That doesn't do anything. You have to put it in each individual like right. container. Yeah, and stir it well so they don't taste it. She was arrested and she was tried for three murders. She was found Obviously. Gu- not guilty. Insanity. Um, she went to the Toledo Asylum and then in 1915 she was transferred to the New Lima State Hospital for the Criminally Insane. Oh where she died in 1934, the day after her 61st birthday. I have so many thoughts. So she killed her parents. But and her sin- brother. And her brother. Forgot about him. Instead of, oh, this is murder. No, she's crazy. You don't know she's crazy. I, I mean, you... I'm assuming that because she was described as having a childlike mind. Or... Or she was one of those people who was so smart that they thought she was stupid. Right. So they took advantage of that. And she's like, hmm, I can get away with this. Because, or. Yeah. There are so many theories that you can run with now. Could it be potentially that she was possessed? Because back then, mental health and possession, they didn't know which was which. And Hence the Salem witch trials. Right. Yeah. So the demon made me do it. <laughs> So we're back to that. (laughs) I mean, but no, there have been cases where people have been convicted because of mental illness and whatnot. Yeah. Because they are so smart, Mm -hmm. other people think they're stupid. Right. Because a lot of them are very quiet. They don't have a lot of friends. They keep to themselves. But if you actually pay attention to these people, they have routines Mm -hmm. and they are very intelligent people. Yeah. And I'll, it has been linked that intelligence and crimes usually go hand in hand. I mean, because if you look at some of the brain pictures that they've done mm-hmm. for a lot of serial killers, they showed, like, this was they his intelligence. They extremely intelligent. Yeah. They, they're like, this is his intelligence level compared to the normal human. This is what he chose to do with it. But I mean, it just, it it really could go either way that she was so smart that people thought she was stupid. Mm-hmm. So they were like, well, obviously this is what's going to happen. Or she just wanted to do what she wanted to do and thought this was going to be the best way to do it. Yeah. Not either not realizing what she had done or. She was smart enough to play it off that she was. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of times you have um, autism, OCD, all of those, (laughs) they were considered, I don't like to use this word because it's not politically correct, but back then they were considered retarded for these things. Right. But all of those people are generally very smart. Yep. You had a lot of people who, autism, ADHD, OCD, those things. They were just locked away because nobody knew how to handle them. Now, today, you have medication. You have therapy. You you deal with mental illnesses and whatnot mm-hmm. in the proper way. And you get people that, you know, can function in society. Back then, people were just thrown into a hole in the wall. 
Pretty much. And then they were given lobotomies and tortured and electroshock therapy and yeah which just then really did make them yeah there was no coming back from that no i mean it fries your brain yeah i mean who wants to put a little bit in their mouth and be like (laughs) 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 right or the the lobotomy with an ice pick just tapping away i always make that joke that sometimes (laughs) i want a lobotomy and then my husband's like yeah it made me make you a better person and then that's usually how that goes yeah but no, no, I'm sure there's probably a vote over there for that, too. Nobody wants to lobotomy me anymore. I'm pretty sure they don't do those. No. No. If they do, we should find out. Not that I want one. <laughs> I'm just saying if we do, we should find out. Do you out. know? Does anybody out there still do lobotomies? Come here, April. <laughs> just tap away. <laughs> all of a sudden, all the stores are going to be sold out of ice picks. <laughs> oh, we have 60 days till Michigan. Kalani goes to Hunter. He's going to be there. I do know that David from TAPS is supposed to be there. Or Jay- No, not Jason. It's David from TAPS is supposed oh, cool. to be there. It looks like a lot of the panels are going to be from the Discovery Channel. A lot of those guys. Paraflix is going to be there. We um, are premium sponsors. Yes. we. Um, so the plan is to kind of rotate who's going to do what but there are going to be a lot of panels that night Mm -hmm. so hopefully we'll get to get a few filmed with those um they just sent us uh an email and it's been on their facebook that there are now add-ons and there's seance night on saturday i'm so excited so we might if we can record um, we might try to tap into that a little bit. If we can't record, we're going to try to go and then we'll do a video. I will about still, re- it. right. There's so many. There's, I mean, there's going to be over 100 vendors. Yeah, there's just tons. Everybody out there in TikTok and YouTube land knows who Kalani Ghost Hunter is. I'll have to do some research because yeah. I. He was, I. <clears throat> I, I think he's still pretty big, but he was huge for a while. Everybody was following his YouTube and stuff. I didn't get excited until I started watching Ghost Hunters. Yeah. I was like, I don't know, nine, oh, nine or ten. He hasn't been around that long. He's okay. only been around a couple of years, I think. Well, that I've heard of a couple of years. Yeah. Um, but there's a bunch of um, psychics going to be there. There's mm-hmm. a handful of paranormal teams that are going to be there. Um, I'm excited about meeting other teams. Yeah, that's fun. I there. I mean, there are a few that are going that are very popular, especially in Michigan. Mm-hmm. So if we can get kind of into the door and start meeting some other teams, it'll be nice because eventually down the road we can hopefully do like a yeah we can do mashup some, type yeah. thing. That would yeah. be fun. If you know of anything in the it's Mount Pleasant Mount Pleasant area. It, this is going to be at the casino so if anybody soaring eagle yes so if anybody knows of any haunted places there comment and let us know it's better to hear the stories from people that have actually been there Mm -hmm. rather than just oh so and so told me to write this because it'll we'll get a discount off our next stay or something like that because we're going to be there friday through sunday Mm -hmm. so if you have any haunted locations let us know and maybe we'll be able to check them out. Yeah. I like the inns. Inns are always good. Yeah. Local restaurants. Yeah. Those are always good. Yeah. I just don't want to, like, just get to Michigan and be like, oh, we're going to go to somebody's house tonight. And I'm like, no. Yeah, no, we're not doing houses, but anything else. <laughs> yeah, no house calls. <laughs> no, I'm not going to show up at some rando house in Michigan and never be seen again. No. Because, trust me. You don't want me to haunt you. I think it would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd love to haunt people. I would too, but... I'm too feisty to get stuck in situations where people could potentially kidnap me. Yeah. I just... No, you just punch first, ask questions later. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I bite, I kick, I scratch, I scream. Yeah. We're getting close to Michigan. Uh, we are going to have a lot of new merch this year. Um, we are going to have our Halloween merch. I don't even want to talk about that. 
Yes, we will have Halloween merch. Um, the Halloween merch will be exclusively for Michigan, but we are going to try to hopefully get some stuff up that we can sell that aren't to the people that come to Michigan um, because it's all brand new designs, color scheme, everything specifically for my favorite holiday. It's mine too. I love Halloween. Um, so we're going to have a lot of cool new stuff <laughs> going on. So we will be updating everybody about Michigan the closer that it gets. And hopefully we'll see a lot of you there. If we don't, you know, you suck. Right? <laughs> have a good night, guys.